The story is that these beings are controlling the population of humanity by controlling our beliefs and how we think and how we feel in such a way that when we leave, our body drops dead and we leave, we have been so well programmed for so many millions of years and we don't even, we don't have a clue anymore how that happened. That when we get out of our bodies, we're going to, some of us will just shift and go free because we're not so programmed. We've broken the program and we've woken up. We're aware, awake. You get out of body, your body's gone, it's dead, you go free at last and you're not going to get trapped, you're not going to get fucked with, nothing, you're just, you're out of here, okay? Other people, they may see the light and go to the light. Now, the story is that this light is a, it's like a, it's part of a light show and a, a way to attract beings who just lost their physical body. And it's a way to get your attention. And it's like, like a moth, really, to a flame. Or a deer in the headlights. We get dazzled by light. It's artificial light. It's not our, it's not our light. It's an artificial light source that has been created by these beings who want to control and dominate us. We're too powerful to just be made to do things. But they can shine a light at us and we go, oh, how, what a pretty light. And you've got earlier programming like hypnotic suggestions from earlier lifetimes of being implanted with suggestions and being caused to be born in a physical body, in a physical earth experience, where you are continually programmed while alive in a physical body. Through religion, main one, education, and in this current society, um, multimedia, news, television, movies, stuff like that. So we are con constantly being worked by these archons who have millions of years of experience in fucking with us. So it's like, how did I get, how did I, we, they've been working us for a very long time. They've been working our, what, how we agree and what we agree to. Okay? So, this is the theory. I'm going with it. I like it. Okay? It's the latest, greatest, newest theory on what's wrong with us on planet Earth. What's wrong is that we've made contractual agreements on a soul level to experience this reality that we're experiencing. And we've done it because we believe it's the right thing to do. But we believe it's the right thing to do because we have been programmed, brainwashed, mind controlled, mind wiped, hypnotized, and entranced for so many thousands and thousands of years that most of humanity doesn't have a freaking chance of snapping out of it. What? Unless they start looking and thinking about life in this way. Okay? So when you start thinking about life in this way and the possibilities of what it's like beyond the physical universe, using having these ideas in, in place and in mind, when your body does drop dead, you can decide for yourself. But at least you have this, you know, something to think about. So you get out of body, you drop dead, and you're out you see that light, and you go, wait, I don't think so. I'm, no, I'm going to hold off on the whole go to the light thing for a minute here and see if there's some other options. You look around, yeah, there's plenty of other options. Just turn up, go in the other direction. Intend to go home. You know, if you listen, if you read some of the scriptures, 
you'll see God described as this large male, powerful male figure, this being that radiates all this light, but it's a, it comes in this form of this giant man. It comes in this form of this giant man. And a lot of, a lot of the biblical um, references and different paths talk about how he demands worship. He demands respect. He, it's like, it was like he's placing, even in the, in the Christian Bible, I'm not trying to pick on the Christians, but he, it talks about this God demanding um, reverence and demanding, um, it even says, I'm a, I am a jealous God, you know, worship no other gods before me. You know, it's like there, there's this feeling of dichotomy of, of positive and negative, dark and light. Polarity. Now, that God is actually the lower, each plane, it's going to sound a little complicated and confusing, but each plane has a ruler that is sort of a lord over that plane. A distributor of the, the uh, currents. That right, right. And so the lord of, of the lower world, there are different lords or, or rulers or distributors. So the lord on the, um, when you get down to like the mental plane and the, and the, and the uh, causal plane, you start looking at like the Brahm, which do, can appear to some as this huge, powerful man that's filled with light and white light, and he's actually a mixture of positive and negative. He's, it's a it actually has a finite lifespan, but it's very 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 long, and he's actually a ruler. He's actually a distributor of this power, and he's responsible for all below him. So it's this tremendous power, and and so souls when they meet this Brahm, there can a lot of them are totally convinced that they've met God, and that this is and whatever it says they're completely mesmerized by it. Soul can also experience uh, <clears throat> the lower world creators as sort of like a, a very powerful, it's a very, pa there's a very powerful creator deity and it can actually appear like a bright light as well. And, and when souls experience this creator deity that has the power of miracles and creation, and it is, um, a lot of beings are extremely impressed and they think that this is God. Um, but not to note that this is actually in the heavens of duality, light and dark, good and evil, light worker, dark worker. And this powerful creator deity, some people refer to it by different names, is actually not God. It's a lower world cre uh, distributor of the two twin currents that split in the lower world. So you have, in the pure positive God worlds, you have a great light and sound that's like a waterfall that pours down from the Godhead in, in the ocean of love and mercy and it comes down and when it reaches the lower worlds it splits into two currents and this powerful creator deity is a distributor of that current. That grid is not the natural grid of the earth, that's not the ley lines, that is an energetic overlay. Uh, when you die, i.e. your physical body ceases to exist, your soul doesn't go back to source. It wants to gets caught in that grid. It is struck with a huge amount of electromagnetic energy, which makes you forget. And then your soul, for want of a better word, I use the word soul, is put back into another body. And only sometimes when the process fails do you have what we call memories of past lives. Time and time and time again, souls are recycled on this planet. That's why that guy there stands there with the sword, because that's their domain. You're not getting out. That's a prison. This is a prison planet. I'm sorry, it's not a nice thing to say, but that's my view. And that's what's going on. And that's why on the Black Ops badge, it's exactly the same. It has a grid around it. Uh, it's my, my contention that humanity has been on this planet a very long time. But at some point, the DNA was completely tampered with uh, to dumb you all down. Uh, to reduce your DNA strands down to two. To take away your ability to be telepathic. So that you can't challenge the prison guards. Uh, if I was a being that could, I use the word feed, uh, if I could feed on energy, how wonderful to have billions of billions of people all being angry, having sex, enjoying football, and producing all that energy that I can then identify, hook onto, and survival. I don't want you all going. If you go back to source, you'll think, I'm not going back to that place. That's a horrible place. It's a horrible. Who would want to be here? So what we'll do is we'll put this energetic grid around the earth. Any soul that comes out, 
We'll see. Let's go to Hollywood now. Look for the white light. Oh, I had a near-death experience, and I saw the white light at the end of the corridor. Don't do it. That is the trap. Walk away from the white light. That is what you've been indoctrinated with. The white light is the trap. You go to the white light, you are zapped, your memory is partially removed, not always fully, but partially removed, and you return to another body. And, ooh, you've forgotten nearly everything, unless you're lucky enough to have a past life memory. What can you do about it? Um, you have to evolve spiritually. You have to not accept the people who run the world as it stands, because they know the truth, and they're doing very nicely on it. I don't know how long it will take, but it's an injustice on humanity. Um, and really and truly, knowledge is power. And I think that you have just got to evolve to a point where you just say no. Imagine if everybody in Britain on Tuesday morning didn't go to the petrol station to fill up. Imagine if everybody didn't pay their taxes. You actually have the power. And the only reason that they have the power is because you give them the power. I'm not being rude. I'm not, I'm not trying to preach to you. That's the reality of it. But if everybody was of one mindset and refused to do something, that would bring them to the negotiating table. How much time do we have for that? 2016 is the last point that they have to make a decision. 2016, they have a portal. They're not, they're not receiving any reinforcements, for want of a better word at the moment. Okay? Um, people will say the reptilians are all gone. No, they haven't. Because if they're all gone, you'd actually be a lot more freer than you are. But the time scale is 2016. Big changes by then. Did you say that this is basically a prison that we've been put in? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, this is a prison planet. It's known as a prison planet. For our previous crimes? No, no. Not for your previous crimes. No. Right. Um, Right, that, that's, a very, that's a very, very incisive question. There are a number of people on this planet who most definitely belong in a prison. Now, don't make a joke about it. I'm talking about, as a proportion, we have more paedophiles, uh, murderers, than any other planet anywhere. There's a reason for that because it is a dumping ground, just as Britain used Australia to put its convicts. So this planet is used as a dumping ground. And that's why there's such a huge jump between nice people and bad people. Also, sometimes you see, especially in later Platonism, the idea that not only is the, is the body temporary, not eternal, and passing away, but the body is also a prison. Because your spirit, they believe, wants to get out of the body. Aren't you frustrated that you can't just escape your body and, and go off and go someplace else for a while and, and zoom out of your, your body and, and go to Argentina for the weekend? You know, not have to pay for airfare? Or, you know, so the idea was that the body imprisons your spirit and your soul. And this has come to be a part of Platonism at the time. So what scholars will call basic Gnosticism include some basic themes that they hold in common. First, the world itself, which is material, is evil. Salvation, therefore, from the world must be escape from this physical world into something else. Gross materiality is not only temporary in some texts, but even bad. It's evil. And salvation, therefore, must be the knowledge of how you, that is the real you, your brain, your, I mean, not your brain, your mind or your soul or your spirit, not your body, that real you is existing in this material body, but salvation will be if it can learn how to escape the body and escape materiality. That not, salvation will become by knowledge, and that knowledge is a secret. Not everybody knows it. So only a few people know it. The content of this knowledge is related to human origins and destination. We were, we were all creation, not of the supreme God who would do nothing imperfect, but of some stumbling or evil, at least clumsy God, who made us. That explains why you know, things go wrong. Why is it that my arthritis acts up all the time? 
couldn't God have made a human body that didn't have arthritis? Well, that's because the supreme God didn't make this body. The evil, clumsy God made the body. This happened, and so the, the world that we created, when you read in Genesis, it says God created the world. That's not the highest God. That's some clumsy God down further on the hierarchy of divine beings in the universe. That God created what we are. The true message of Christianity, according to these guys, is to learn who you are, where you came from, so you can escape the body and get back to your true origin. That is, you will become one with God again. And this was expressed in a poem by Theodotus. It went like this. Who we were, what we have become, where we were, whither we were thrown, whither we are hastening, from what we are redeemed, what birth is, what rebirth is. Okay, now you answer the riddle. It's a poem riddle. Who we were. If you're a Gnostic, who were you? Answer. Divine being. Thank you. See, it's not hard. I'm not answering questions. I'm just trying you, you'll remember this better if you answer. What have you become? Mud, entrapped in a, a dead body, entrapped in materiality. Where were you? Heaven with the Divine Father, with God. Whither we were thrown, where have you been thrown? Into the earth, into the world, into materiality. Where are you hastening? Where are you going in, a hur in such a hurry? Back to the Divine God. What are you redeemed from? You're redeemed from Jesus, the material world. You're redeemed from being embodied. Uh, what is birth? In this system, what is birth? Damnation, death. When you're born, your spark is entrapped in your body. That's not a good thing. You shouldn't be celebrating your birthday for crying out loud. That's like celebrating when you were thrown in prison. And what is rebirth? Death, or learning your true self, learning that you, the true self won't die at all. It's just a dream. Why it's never just a dream, is it? A face full of glass hurts like hell when you're in it. It feels real. Okay, in a show you mentioned that we were fooled after death to reincarnate on Earth. You called it a soul trap. You mentioned having met with a being in a room which can show up as a known person of Earth, for example, and that it convinced you to come back to Earth to fix things. Did that happen right after having left your body, or did you have to pass through some sort of tunnel in order to get to that room? Is it true that soul recycling has been terminated? Okay, I don't know what I mean by soul recycling. Um, but this, there's a couple of different things that are getting muddled here. First of all, yes, uh, typically when the soul trap was active, when one died, one got shunted into a, um illusory, I guess you could call it, holding pen that was designed to look like whatever that person believed in. Essentially, if you were Buddhist, it was designed to look like a Buddhist afterlife. If you were Chris Christian, it was meeting St. Peter at the pearly gates. If you were uh, Muslim, it was appropriate to that faith, whatever. Whatever your beliefs are, you got shunted into something that looks like that. And this happened also with near-death experiences as well, um, at which point they usually said, oh, uh, it's not your time yet, go back, sort of like you're here a little bit early. But here's a glimpse so you can go back and tell everyone what you saw. Um, at that point, you would then be confronted by being, uh, beings or a being who would then discuss your life with you. And a couple hundred years went by while I was tooling around doing my thing, and I was approached by other beings who said, uh, Tanakh, we really need you down on that planet. And I said, hell no, I just got out of there. I'm not going back. And they said, yeah, but we really need you down on that planet. And I said, you better give me some good evidence as to why you need me, and this better be worth it. And finally they convinced me, and yes, I did get born on this planet, and here I am. It was not related to the Lords of Karma, and it was not related to the reincarnation trap. It was a voluntary, intentional incarnation, and I was able to recover my memories during this life 
or at least those that are relevant to this mission, um, which is also something that doesn't happen with the reincarnation trap because they do their best to wipe you before they send you back. Um, I have never remembered who I was in other lives on this planet. This time I did, and it was because I wasn't coming back from the reincarnation trap. I came back deliberately, and yes, it's been difficult. It is not easy to live in two worlds, <laughs> to say the least. Um, but it's still worth doing, I believe, for your sake and for the sake of this entire planet. There is no I entity. That's the first fact that we have to come to grips with. There is no entity called I. There is no individual self. This is an illusion created by a stream of language flowing through the conscious mind. If we can come to grips with this and realize the truth of this, then everything becomes easy. Stop holding on to the phantom of your internal opera and be free. At the very moment you choose to realize that you are emptiness, nothingness, the whole battle is over. Just letting it go, letting it go, and returning the attention back to the who am I? What is the I? There will be an ultimately a realization that the I is the absolute space in which it all occurs, not any entity at all. And that's when the whole flow of desire and fear dissolve and the energy that was entrained into the pathways of desire and fear and anxiety and all the neurotic feelings, depression, etc., is liberated and it returns to its original state. And the original state of the energy is bliss. It's divine love. It's absolute serenity and peace. It's everything you're looking for through the desire that can't be achieved, through the desire to finally be good enough, to be whole, to be whatever it is you're imagining you need to acquire in order to feel okay about yourself. So when you let go of that futile quest, there's a realization that you are already that. But the you that realizes you're already that, or the I, is not an I entity. It is the I that is the recognition of the oneness of the entire totality of existence, of the universe. There's no more separation. It is the one without a second. And that is what I am. And each of us can realize that is what I am. And in the moment of that recognition, then all of the neuroses or psychoses or other kinds of pathologies, fears, anxieties, etc., fall away. There's nothing for them to hold on to. It requires an entity, a complex, for these kinds of negative feelings to stick to. When there's no entityhood that is being affirmed, nothing can stick to pure awareness. And then one is simply the presence that is the Supreme Being. The Supreme Being not as an entity, but as the real that can never be described, never be objectified, never be known, except in this act of letting go of all attempts to do that and resting in pure beingness. In other words, vibration means waves within consciousness. Consciousness is the ultimate energy, the ultimate stuff of the universe. And that stuff is formless, but the waves will cause it to take forms. And all of this is, is vibration, right? But this, this room and the people in it are particular vibrational frequencies. And if your frequency alters even just a little bit, uh, you will suddenly go from human to angel 
or to alien or to some other form because it's all you are is the vibrational frequency that happens to be the standing wave at that moment and that wave can be altered very easily that's called shape shifting and, and there are yogis who are very good at that so this is a whole science but vibration is the ultimate um, level of the quantum field that appears as what we think of as reality but is really uh, something that can be altered infinitely through the shifting of the frequency. But none of this could be explained because the ego mind is not capable of grasping it. For many reasons. One, it takes the succession of events in time as real. It takes this dream of reality that it calls reality because it labels it as such as being something different from that state you're in in deep sleep when there is no external reality. And it makes a false distinction between the dream and the waking state. All are simply the manifestations of the one unchanging self. And until you understand the screen on which all of this is projected, which is itself the intelligence that is projecting it, Ramana lived before there were holograms, so he had to use the movie screen as his metaphor. But I think if he were here today, he would have changed this and say, no, it's a hologram. But do, how many of you realize that you are in a holographic matrix right now? But if in fact you are in a holographic matrix, then nothing that you believe about yourself as the bodily being that is going through space and time has any relation to reality. And as this hologram becomes more and more insane every day, and wouldn't you all agree that the world is more of a madhouse every day? And that in the stupidity of the characters in this matrix hurtling toward the final world war that will put it all out of its misery, everyone is in denial and does not recognize yet that there is only one hope because there is no answer within the framework of the phenomenal plane, socially, politically, economically, in whatever way you think you can cope with this or deal with the decomposition of consciousness itself that is leading to ever greater meltdowns, not only of everyone else's ego, but of your own because all egos are fragmenting until the fragments are so small that there is no feasibility for any coherent existence. And as the fragments get smaller and the coherence is lost, the symptoms of that massive splitting of consciousness show up in the body as increasingly grave illnesses. And, of course, emotional disorders, suicidal tendencies, and feelings of demonic possession, and of all sorts of other calamitous psychological states. So the good news that Ramana is giving us is that none of that is real. None of your suffering is real. It occurs only within the matrix. And when you understand that you're not actually in the matrix, and when you understand the intelligence that is projecting this matrix into apparent existence, then and only then will the way out, the way to change the trajectory of history, your own and the planets, become clear. But nothing short of absolute disbelief in the mind-body 
pseudo-entity can heal the suffering and the insanity that is being acted out within that projection. And so the importance of meditation, self-inquiry, as Ramana called, to discover not some new theory about reality. Study of quantum physics is not sufficient, nor that of any other field of consciousness studies or any other phenomenal plane conceptual effort to symbolize all of this because no symbols can capture that which is projecting the field in which the symbols arise which is already fictional and embedded in the falseness of the duality that needs to be extracted from in order to find what is real and so the only response that is adequate is the absolute silencing of the mind stream. But that silencing will only happen when you have lost your interest in and your identification with the character in this holographic play. Because otherwise, you will be identified with a mind that will try to solve its problems at the very level in which those problems are being caused. And so the transcendence of the objectivizing mind that wants to project out it's unconscious fantasies that it doesn't even know are unconscious fantasies and it will accept as reality because that enables one to avoid the unbearable pain of the motivations behind which the sensor is projecting as a protection, a defense mechanism. Against what pain? The pain of your knowledge that you do not exist and that no action that you can take is authentic if you are not acting from the authentic self. And the authentic self is no self at all. No individual being within this world that is a projection. So no matter what is being done here, no matter what pilgrimage you think you are on, until you realize that you yourself are the place of pilgrimage that you must arrive at. There will be no salvation from the insanity and the sickness and the despair and the dark clouds of the ego mind that become ever more unstable as the entire collective plane of our world destabilizes at a seismic level, a climate change level, social, political, every level that you can observe is losing its coherent, right, its coherent basis and leaving us entirely groundless. Therefore, we are in an unprecedented moment in human history, assuming human history even has a reality outside of the consciousness that is projecting past and future. But the unprecedented nature of this moment is that there is no ground to stand on. There is no hope of a future. There is no sense of a reality that can even be shared with anyone, even the person you might have thought was closest to you, if you look close enough, they're total strangers to you and becoming ever more strange at every moment. The islands of psychic reality are expanding away from each other, just as the universe, uh, 
according to the cosmologist, is expanding and the galaxy is getting further and further away from each other. So our capacity to communicate, not only with, our, with our, uh, others, but with ourselves, gets less and less. The signals get weaker, the noise, the interference patterns get stronger. And so uh, until we can find the beacon from which the central core of truth is being transmitted and resonate with that, there will be a total chaos and confusion and lostness and an oscillation between one polarity and another. I wouldn't even say bipolarity, multipolarity, just as the political situation is multipolar. The ego structure is now multipolar because it has no center to hold it together and not even two opposing centers, but a chaos of many fragmented nodes of consciousness that have no capacity to contextualize the whole or to transcend context entirely. And so this situation of tremendous, critical acceleration can only be held together through the combined creation of an energy field in which the peace and the silence in which we can literally recollect our fragments into wholeness, gather ourselves back into an integrated whole with the practice of using whatever margin of willpower we have to find the source from which all of these fragments have emerged and separated and return to that through the only power that is capable of doing that which is love, love alone whether you want to call that source God or the Buddha mind or some other term is irrelevant but the God you must return to is not the God who creates and sustains and destroys the universe. No, you have to find God as she is in her private life, when she has no interest in the universe. That absolute core that is unrelated to the matrix and plays no part in its projection, but that is entirely transcendent. Because otherwise, you're only focusing on your own projection, an imaginary <coughs> deity. And any projection of your imagination will just take you deeper into confusion. It can only be a retracing of your entire process of externalization until you find the core of your own being. But this word own is a very key signifier because what is it that owns you? What do you think you are? It's not the ego's own self. It is the self that has projected that into manifestation. And it is unknown and unknowable to the ego mind that is searching. And that's why Ramana says, you'll never figure this out in a million years until it happens. But it won't be, it won't be figured out and it won't happen until there is surrender. The only victory comes through surrender. Any action you take makes your position worse. to be absolute stillness. And in that stillness, all the answers and all of the peace of mind and the joy and the beauty 
that may now be missing from your life that you're looking for in the wrong plane of reality will re-emerge as what you have always been. Let's go into stillness. <laughs> 